unless you see where you can contribute, unless you do contribute, then this will die. And quite frankly, it should die. If, if no one feels it has merit, and if none of you feel that it is part of you, then why should it continue? But if you're open to the challenge and you want to be part of a group and make a difference, this is as much yours as it is mine. And that is why I'm stepping down at the end of this year and why we've started the process. So there's enormous change happening, but this is change because there are bigger things afoot. UK is one part of it, albeit an important part, but we have always been told that at this time there will be climate change. We're told that there will be a change in awareness. We're told that there'll be upheavals in terms of the political landscape. And if we believe some of the most ancient prophecies and accurate prophecies of the Western system, we're told that it is the end of their world. Well, all that's coming true. All of it is coming true before our eyes. But when we're facing prison or we're facing the loss of our home or we're facing the lien against our bank accounts, it doesn't really help. You can't eat prophecy. You can't eat philosophy. So I understand that all this is great, but it comes back to the pressing issues at hand. So let's talk about some of those updates then in terms of the things that we're doing. Well, as you are all hopefully aware, we updated the ecclesiastical process uh, beginning in the last uh, week or so to focus on national leadership rather than the local and state leadership. And the reason we changed that wasn't that the intention of the first version of the ecclesiastical deeds was wrong. The intention hasn't changed at all. The words in no way were deficient. Your rights were not compromised. There was nothing you did that was wrong. Instead, what we saw throughout the world with sufficient evidence is that there is no remedy in their system at the moment at a state or a local level. The level of stupidity, ignorance and arrogance means we are doing an injustice to the knowledge and we're doing an injustice to each and every one of you trying to seek remedy if we continue further to try and get these people who, by the way, registered us when we were children to also recognise the fairness that we no longer consent to be regarded as a slave, that the, the, we have returned living, competent, and that these trusts can no longer stand. At this point, it makes no difference at a state and local level. They just simply will not act. They bury their heads and they run away. Well, now it's time to take this up to the national level and see if the national leadership will recognise the foundation of their law. The ecclesiastical deed process, while it appears strange for many, and it probably appears strangest to those with some legal background, because the people who are lied to first in their system regarding the law are the lawyers. But the foundation of the ecclesiastical deed process, the concept of the thumbprint as the pollex in Latin, poll, the deed poll, is a foundation of a promulgation of an act. The use of blood goes back to Leviticus and it is blood that was always regarded as the ultimate currency. That goes back to the beginning of Mithraism. Now, it's not as if they don't know these things. Many, in fact, many of the legal structures in London are built on Mithraic temples. The leadership know exactly what this is. It's just their minions have no idea. Now, ignorance is no excuse, they tell us. And it goes both ways. Ignorance of their own rules is no excuse. Well, just as I said when we did the state and the local level, the purpose of sending the ecclesiastical deed polls is not to achieve a victory. We don't do it because 
we want their consent. We do it to prove the fact that they are in supreme dishonour. And if they're in supreme dishonour with the law, they can't represent the law. And if they don't represent the law, then all they can possibly be are usurpers, criminals and pirates. And you know what? That is the historic change that we're seeing. Think about the incredible change that people's attitude is now in terms of the law. People are not viewing the law and saying, stuff the law. In fact, the opposite. People are becoming more respectful and distinguishing the concept of law from people who falsely claim to represent the law. And that's what's happened in the UK and that's what's happening right around the world at the moment. The veil has been lifted on these people. The separation has been made. The law has been cleaved from their grasp for the first time in over 500 years. The guilds can no longer claw on the law and say, we are the law, the law are, are us, we are one and the same. That is now outed as a complete lie. They're nothing more than two-bit magicians and we expose them constantly. The fact that the process in the courts is nothing more than a bedrock of the sacrament of penance. The writ is the, is the form of action. The case is the course of action. The two combine and complete the process. On top of that, they lay their trust law. On top of that, they lay their statutes interpreted as case law. An unholy cake of mess. And underpinning all that, they need us to remain honourable, or if not, to run away so they can claim that they don't have the power of attorney. We are delinquent and they can process their infernal bonds. Well, the process is revealed for all to see. There's no more magic hidden in their system. None. We've exposed it all. Now, we may not know every process, nor should we need to know every process because they make process on the fly. The one thing the courts admit is they construct maxims on the fly. They have admitted openly that they will entertain concepts of extreme stupidity and if the opposite side does not object, then it runs. So these courts cannot possibly be viewed as out positioning them on process. You can't beat people who give no care for the law on process. We beat them on substance. We beat them on principle. We expose them for the fact that they do not know the law, they do not believe the law, and they do not represent the law. And that is being exposed all around the world. That's a very exciting time. So keeping in perspective with the ecclesiastical deeds, their primary purpose is for us to spiritually stand up and say, I am not someone else's property. My relationship with the divine and the universe is sacrosanct. No one can claim my body but me. No one can claim my soul but me or my mind but me. And anyone that has created an artifice to make that claim is false. And I want an accounting by these criminals. I want an accounting of them to stand up and tell us what they've done. Of course they won't. Of course they won't. And in that process, the ecclesiastical deed for all time puts down their dishonour. And that is the lead up to the end of the year, the day of divine judgment. Now into that process, that's great, but that a number of you still need to, to find remedy. So there are new things that are coming on. We're yet to finish the documents in terms of how to save your home in going down the route in their system of claiming your position as a tenant, seeking to evoke your right of redemption and the notes of that process need to be put in. Now, I have had conversations with a number of you that have started down that process and already seen that the system is more than happy to completely bypass their own rules. So I'm hoping that as we add to these notes, that this will assist you. But again, bear in mind, as you expose these two-bit magicians, what we're left with is criminals. 
and as criminals we expect to see them not following their own rules and that's really when we get to that point then others can see it as well and that's the exciting part people who have not gone through the pain that many of you gone through now can actually see there's something not right and that's the exciting thing so adding into the mix there are some new tools that we've been focusing on and one of them I promise to talk about is the executor letter so let me cover this concept executor letter now some months ago the concept executor letter was brought forward by a fellow by the name of David Clarence who in the process chose to say a lot of untrue and unkind things at the time but putting that kind of barrage aside it represented an important idea because it raised the fact that there are some fundamental procedural issues that if they are not followed are fatal to the process now let's go back again to some of the insights that we've already shared in the knowledge on one hyphen heaven dot org and one of the key insights that we shared two weeks ago is that at the most basic level the most fundamental level the ecclesiastical level of any action before the court a court is that the process is the perfection of an indulgence through the sacrament of penance and the sacrament of penance begins with a a prayer a plea then an act of contrition and then the act of absolution and in that process there is an auricular confession and if you look at the court process and match it against the sacrament of confession you will find every step fully aligned every step is fully aligned and this is the bedrock now above that process sits trust law one of the things that they do whenever a case is created against us is that they create a brand new constructive trust so while the base is ecclesiastical in the perfection of a writ above that is trust law so a writ is really three things it's the beginning of the perfection of an indulgence it is the announcement of the construction of a new trust and the naming of only one role at that point the beneficiary the only role named in that trust at that point is the beneficiary the one to whom the writ is issued and then the third being a statutory instrument an instrument defined by their processes then interpreted by their case law so it's three things now one of the problems I've had with the approach to things like the executive letter in the past is that in the absence of the knowledge of why one is using things with the same problem that we've faced until now you can't defeat the bar you can't defeat lies and criminals that claim the law ignorance you can't defeat ignorance with ignorance you can only defeat it by exposing them by you being competent being knowledgeable of why these things may work so that when they dishonor as they will when you finally corner a rat the last thing it will do is it will fight so don't expect them to do the right thing and sometimes they will but competence is the key so with the three layers neither just looking at one when a form of, of action is issued a writ a period of time takes place between the writ being served on us and the hearing now during that period only one position usually is named in the trust relationship and then that is the beneficiary the beneficiary being the person not you you're the surety but the beneficiary and the person you can stand as the beneficiary and in their system they accept you at any point as standing as a beneficiary now before the hearing before you appear and once jurisdiction is perfected in the three levels personal territorial and subject matter and the plea once the, all those three are established and the plea is perfected once you get to the plea then the positions 
remaining in the trust, such as the 